We all know to lose body fat, you have to be in a calorie deficit. And you could do that by either moving more or eating less or a combination between the two of those things. Because at some point you will have to combine eating less with moving more. And to a point, obviously eating less is gonna give you the results you want, just eating less alone, but there'll be a point where you have to increase your movement, otherwise your results will come to a standstill. And so immediately when people think they have to increase the amount of time they move, they think, okay, let's, let's do, let me go for like three or four, five Ks a week, or you know, just hypothetically, and let me do those on top of the weight training I'm already doing. And that can lead you to run into some problems. And we're gonna get into that later in this video. But this video is all about why I prefer walking than running to lose body fat. Anyway, if you haven't clicked that thumbs up button, click it now. And if you haven't subscribed and this is your first time here, click that subscribe button. This channel is all about building muscle and losing body fat and just feeling the best you've ever felt. So the main thing you actually wanna make sure you're doing is to make sure you're doing your resistance training. I would say between three to five times a week. Some people might push for more, but realistically, that's probably m like the sustainable amount for most people. So three to five sessions of resistance training a week. And then you're coupling that with a calorie deficit. You'll get to a point where you're relatively low in body fat, but you probably wanna go even lower. And that's the point where you're gonna have to start to either move more or eat less. And sometimes, a lot of the time actually, eating less is not an option because eating less is only gonna make you feel uh, less energetic. It's gonna impact your lifts. It's gonna maybe impact your sleep, maybe increase your stress, well, likely increase your stress in your life as well. So it's not an option. So then what do we do? We move more. While I have nothing against running, there's nothing wrong with running. If you find it easy to run and running's part of your routine anyway, and it doesn't affect your lifting at all, then continue to do that. Then you also probably wouldn't be watching this video, or maybe you would. But if it's, it, you know, if you're one of those people like me actually, that find it really difficult to run, find it really, not to actually physically run, but to actually get myself to run, find a motivation to run, then you're probably doing yourself a disservice by forcing yourself to run, and it's probably not sustainable for you long term. But like I said, if you love running, then that's completely fine. It won't be a problem for you to continue to run. But this is more for the people that, you know, you feel like you should be running, but you don't like running, and you just don't like the thought of running. There is, a, there is another way, and there's other ways what I use, and it's, it's as simple as walking. You can actually literally close the video right now and know that, I prefer walking and you can give walking a shot, but I'm gonna get into the uh, fine detail exactly why. So basically when most people run, they don't actually know how to run. Even myself, I, my running mechanics are not great. So that number one increases my chance of injury. Number two, you've got to consider also the road. Um, you look at uneven surfaces, the, yeah, the, the, uh, the corners, there's loads of things, the uphill, downhill, slight bends and just stuff that, that can make you much more susceptible to injuries. You might be saying, I'm running on a treadmill, and I, yeah, that's completely fine. Uh, but if you couple, let's say, three to four sessions of running, say half an hour each time, up, for argument's sake, roughly 5K if you're doing road running or running on a treadmill, and you're doing that plus three to five sessions of weight training, you're gonna be taxing your nervous system a fair bit. You're gonna feel seriously tired and fatigued, and you may even impair your recovery. If you're impairing your recovery, your ability to train progressively is gonna be affected. That's gonna limit the amount of muscle you can build. And also, it can affect your sleep, which can also affect your recovery even further. And if that's happening, you might actually reach a point where you actually just too tired to even train and you just end up breaking the regime and just going back to you know not really doing that much and just eating whatever you want and just not following the plan and not sticking uh, to the plan in any way because you've just exhausted yourself and you're not seeing the results you want in the gym so this is actually quite it's more common than not people will just throw in extra sessions of cardio first of all like I said, you're gonna make sure you're in a calorie deficit, you're doing your resistance training, that res resistance training is progressive, and if you add in a walking, by walking I don't mean you have to walk hours every day, but just adding in walking, say, 
First thing in the morning, if you can, I always like to walk first thing in the morning for 20, 30 minutes. It really wakes you up, exposes you to sunlight, helps with your circadian rhythm as well, which can help affect your ability to sleep later on. And I promise you, if you haven't tried that, give it a try, especially if you live in a sunny climate as well. I live in uh, the UK. It's not always that sunny, but I still get out every morning for 20 minutes, just a 20 minutes walk, just like a nice, slow and steady, steady pace. And if that's not an option for you, what you can do is you can walk at your lunch break, you can walk after lunch, after dinner, just 15 minutes each time. This will accumulate over time and will increase your step count, increase the amount of calories you burn. Obviously, when we're talking about calories burn, you're gonna burn more calories in less time when you're running. But the problem lies how sustainable is running 5K three to four times a week. Like I said, if it is for you, stick with it, that's completely fine. For me personally, it's not sustainable. And if you want to get into the, the lower body fat uh, numbers, you want to get maybe 10%, sub 10%, you're going to need to do a, a bit more movement, like I said earlier. So I suggest the walking. If you can track your step count, track your step count. If you're getting in an extra 10,000 a day than what you're used to, for example, just by walking, just by moving more throughout the day, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna burn roughly an extra 500 calories a day. And that could be the difference of being in a deficit and not being in a deficit and getting the results and not getting the results as well. And another thing with running is if you're really, really tired from running, so you wake up first thing in the morning, you run. And then the rest of the day, you move a lot less because you ran in the morning because you're tired then your overall NEAT will go down, which means your overall daily calorie uh, expenditure will go down, and which means it could actually balance out and the run could become, I wouldn't say pointless, but it, it would become a bit like you ran to burn this many calories, but now you're burning this less calories throughout the day, so it kind of balances out. Anyway, that's a possibility that can happen. And also it could put you off doing your weight training session later on in the evening if you're doing like morning cardio and weight training in the evening. That's just um, an idea and also it's what I've um, experienced myself as well. This can definitely happen. But yeah, like I said, an extra 10,000 steps a day would mean that you're burning uh, 500 calories extra. That's about an hour and a half to do 10,000 steps. And that's about roughly eight kilometers and that doesn't mean just walking the whole time the walking is just going to contribute to the step count and if you can obviously fit in along the walk then fit it in if you could walk to the station for instance uh, when you're going to work walk to the supermarket or just increase the amount of walks you do daily and that's a sustainable practice you can continue to walk walking is part of everyday life and walking something you can enjoy there's anti-anxiety benefits for walking there's many benefits for walking outside obviously losing body fat so just implement some walking see how you feel especially if you're looking to uh, reduce the body fat and you're looking to do it without using something unsustainable because most people let's face it don't have the time to be doing three to five sessions of weight training a week plus two to three sessions of running that's just way too con time consuming for the average person Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up. If you've got any questions at all, comment below. And until the next video, keep pushing those limits.